There is no better way to start your Friday than recapping another series sweep. This time over the Reds, you are Locked On Brewers. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning. Happy Friday. What a day it is. Thanks for making Locked On Brewers your first listen of the day. My name is Dominic Catronio. I am the statistician for Valley Sports Wisconsin, bringing you everything you need to know with your only daily podcast dedicated to your Milwaukee Brewers. What a week. They have won three in a row against the Reds. They went five and one on the six game homestand. Uh, They have now won eight of their last nine. They're in fuego. The offense in fuego. We're going to talk about it yesterday. Another huge win for the Brew Crew. The offense, they were down 3-0 after a half inning, and they turned it into a 10-5 victory over the lowly Reds. They're now 3-22 are the Reds. The Brewers are now 18-8 and and in first place in the Central Division. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to us on YouTube. we got plenty more content coming out there as well. And if you haven't already, follow us on Twitter at LockedOnBrewers or myself at Dom underscore Catronio. Who thought they weren't going to hit five home runs? <laughs> five home runs? No shot. Well, no, they're just going to hit six home runs yesterday. So I talked about it in yesterday's episode saying that the record for a six-game span in Brewers history for hitting the most homers in a six-game span was 19. The most homers for a homestand was 17. Uh, they blew past both of those with 20 home runs on this homestand. Six more yesterday to time their own high-water mark of this season. Uh, that is also the most in the big leagues this season. 20 homers in a six-game span. They now lead baseball in home runs along with the Yankees with 35 homers this year. They just scored 34 runs against the Reds. Uh, and I, I know what you're thinking. Dom, it's the Reds. It's the, the Talk to me when they have good pitching. Time out. You're probably the same person that's going to say, oh, they didn't beat them bad enough if they won 2-1. to one. Oh, my goodness, it's the Reds. You, you got to re- beat the Reds by 20. Look, they just swept them. Don't tell me, oh, it's bad pitching. They did their job. They scored 34 runs. I know the Reds have an offense that is extremely depleted. They don't have much pitching. Hunter Green is their top prospect, and the Brewers just absolutely um- embarrassed him. I absolutely embarrassed him. They had no problem with seeing a 99-mile-an-hour fastball. Yes, they struck out seven times against him with only a slider. It was their first time seeing him. They still took him deep four times. They did what they were supposed to do against the Reds and then some. So let's also be fair here. Yes, it was the Reds. Should you expect this performance against the Braves? Absolutely not. A win is a win, whether you win by 20 or you win by one. A win is a win. And these are just more fun to talk about. That's all it is. So we're going to talk about briefly, wax poetically about the game, the series, the homestand, everything that's gone positively and gone well so far here for the Brewers this week before they embark on a three-city road trip. Ten-gamer coming up. Uh, This will be, excuse me, nine-gamer coming up. They got three starting tonight in Atlanta against the defending World Series champions, of course, the team that knocked out the Brewers last season. Then they go to Cincinnati for the first time and get to see these Reds again. That'll be Monday through Wednesday. Off day next Thursday. And then they play three in Miami to take on the Marlins for the first time this season before they return home for a six-game homestand. So let's briefly talk about yesterday's game. Again, a 10-5 to victory. Adrian Hauser did not have his best stuff, as was evidenced in the first inning, allowing three runs to the Reds. But once again, the Brewers pick up their starting pitcher after a tough first inning. The Brewers go 1-2, homer, homer, to start things off. Only the fifth time in team history, the first two batters of a game have hit homers to start the game. They've never had three in a row hit a homer to start a game, in case you were wondering. So, bang, bang, 1-2, homer, homer, with Luis Arias and Christian Yelich. Oh, by the way, welcome back, Weisho, by the way. What a stretch. What a return here for Weisho against the Reds. And I know what you're saying. It's against the Reds, yada, yada. I don't care. But Weisho did his job and even let off yesterday. He's batted all over this lineup. It was a lot of regulars had the day off yesterday. Kutch had the day off. Kane had the day off. Wong had the day off. Uh, but Weisho comes in. He's played all three games against the Reds. He comes in and goes four for nine. 
He has a homer, the leadoff homer from yesterday. Three walks, three strikeouts. He's doing his job. It's good to have him back. So Weicho starts off the game with a homer. Yelly follows up with a homer. I'm going to have more to talk about with Yelly in just a little bit. And then they add one more a little bit later in the frame, thanks to, uh, scrolling up here, uh, thanks to a Rowdy Telez double that was nearly another homer for him. The first four batters against Green were absolutely not fooled. Urias a homer on an eight-pitch AB. Yelich homers to center on his third pitch that he sees. Adamas walks on four pitches, and Rowdy rips a, a double to right center. It brings me to a point that I bring on later. Remember when I asked about the Brewers trying to be a little more aggressive? More on that in a little bit, okay? And this is a great example of it when they were going aggressive in the first inning. So they managed to tie things up one-to-one after three innings of play. Then you move on, second inning. Hunter Green is still out there. And again, the Brewers are still not phased. Single the other way by Jace Peterson. He steals second base. We show strikes out. So there are two outs now in the inning and a two-out rally forms. Double, homer, double. All in a row with Yelich, Adamas, and Telez. So Adamas connects on his seventh homer. Yelich's double drives home Peterson. Telez double. Uh, there was nobody on base, but they just keep smashing the ball. They, the first five exit velos against Hunter Green were all over 105 miles an hour. They were absolutely not fooled by what he was throwing out there. So now the Brewers lead by a score of 6-3. to three. Nothing again in the top of the third as Adrian Hauser starts to settle in. Go to the bottom of the third. Hunter Green is still out there. Tyrone Taylor rips a ball, an elevated fastball to left for his first homer of the year. Two batters later, Keston Hira rips a home run to left field for his second homer. Homer of the year. And that was the end of the day for Hunter Green. Brewers added two more runs there. So now they lead by a score of 8-3. to three. Cincinnati would make it interesting, though, to their credit. They would add a run in the fourth, and they would get the bases loaded in the fifth. But Adrian Hauser made the pitches he needed. Only one run scored in that inning. Ground out, strike out, ground out. Did his job with the bases loaded. Didn't allow anything else to come across. Man, he and then from then, the bullpen was nearly perfect. The next four innings, shutout ball, only one base runner against the bullpen. They didn't need Josh Hader thanks to the extra two runs of insurance from another Willie Adamas home run, his second multi-homer game in the last 10 days. What a week it's been for Willie Adamas and Rowdy Telez. So the Brewers win by a final of 10-5 to with 12 hits. Uh, they also walked a total of two times. They hit six homers to tie their season high. They had four more doubles. 10 extra base hits, uh, two out RBIs. They had four from Willie, and Hira and Yelich also had uh, two out RBIs. Hauser gets his third win of the year. He's got a 3.42 ERA. They saddled Green with his fourth loss in his career. He now has an 8.71 ERA. So we're going to dive into the numbers here in just a second. Before we do that, I want to tell you about our friends at Built Bar. Look, Built Bar, summer is coming. If you want to get that easy, quick snack on the go, something that you can just pack and forget about and know that you have something tasty and delicious waiting for you, Built Bar is the way to go. Covered in 100% real chocolate. That means Built Bar, you can eat healthy and enjoy it. You can try their amazing puffs as well. They've got these interesting, super fun flavors with banana cream pie, churro flavor. It's a protein bar, but it tastes like a churro. It's the best of both worlds. They've got a mixed box available for you, too. Well, it's got 12 flavors of bars and puffs. So if you're a sampler like myself, you can just put your hand in and see what you get. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, only 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. We've got an offer for you as well. Go to Built.com, that's B-U-I-L-T.com, and use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, the promo code is LOCKED15 to get 15% off at Built.com. And this is the last chance that we can remind you about our friends at BlueNile.com with Mother's Day on Sunday. Look, fine jewelry is a great gift. Come on, what mom doesn't want a great, perfect piece from BlueNile.com? Look, if you have trouble with fine jewelry, they have experts on hand available 24-7 via phone or via chat at BlueNile.com. You can celebrate the special women in your life with Blue Nile. And you can easily navigate thousands of fine jewelry options at every single price point. Whether she prefers a statement piece or something that's a little more subtle, BlueNile.com has fine jewelry options for every single mom. You can shop diamond earrings, tennis bracelets, or even pendant necklaces. It's incredible. So 
This Mother's Day, give her something she'll remember forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. Promo code is locked on to get $50 off $500. This is a podcast exclusive to Locked On listeners. Again, you got to order. It's Friday. Mother's Day is Sunday. So order it today if you still haven't got something. BlueNile.com today. Numbers. Let's have some fun with numbers. Look, 34 runs against the Reds. It's the most in a three-game series against the Reds in team history. 20 homers, again, the most in a six-game span. Willie Adamas now has multiple homers in two games in the span of 10 days. 35 homers, the most in baseball. Let's just go through this homestand, okay? Cubs and Reds. The Brewers, during this homestand, hit 307 as a team, had an on-base of 395, had an, a slugging of 668, and thus an OPS of 1063. They averaged nine runs a game, even with a shutout in there. Remember, there was a shutout on Sunday against the Cubs. What? Now, pitching, just as good. 2.50 ERA over the six games. They threw 54 innings, had 75 strikeouts, and just 14 walks. That's the best dang pitching staff in baseball. They didn't even need to be their best, and they still turned into 2.50 ERA. They're the best. Let's go through some season-long numbers now. So, Christian Yelich, don't look now, guys. Look, Yelly continues to hit the ball hard. And I'm going to keep saying, let's let the dude play. Let's let the dude play. The dude is playing. Yelich now has 89 at-bats, 105 plate appearances. So you're getting close to that sample size you're looking for. And this was number one thing on my wish list. To have Yelly hit 250, 260, you'd be happy. With some power, with signs of power, with signs of health. Yelly is currently slashing 247, 343, 449, and a 792 OPS. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Dom, they're paying him over $25 million a year. He's supposed to be putting up bigger numbers than that. After the last two years, to see this sign of encouragement from Yelich, it's step one, okay? he's not gonna. It's not going to flick overnight. But the fact that he's doing this in the first 100 plate appearances, he is showing that he is alive and well. He is swinging. He has stolen a perfect three for three bases. Could you imagine saying, oh, yeah, Christian Yelich is going to be stealing bases with what he was dealing with last year? No. He's a completely different player right now. Yelich last year only had nine homers all season. He's already got four right now. He only stole, attempted to steal 12 bases. He's already got three. Okay, he's healthy. Let's let the dude keep playing. He's he's showing great signs. Willie Adamas, here's his slash line right now. 235 average, 342 on base. 531 slugging, thus an 873 OPS. That's five doubles and eight homers for Willie. He leads the team in home runs with two more to snatch it back from Rowdy to Les. Oh, speaking of Rowdy, best hitter on the team right now. 275 average, a 341 on base. So if you paid attention, 343 for Yelly, 342 for Willie, 341 for Rowdy. Coincidence? Maybe. Slugging percentage for Rowdy is 625. His OPS is 966, seven doubles, and seven homers. I want to make a point here. I had this thought during the game. Seeing, I have some friends in the Blue Jays organization, and one reached out to me saying, I am so happy for Rowdy Telez, because they all knew he could play. But having to look over his shoulder at Vlad Jr., we've talked about it all the time, and it led me to thinking, Looking at this roster, some of the most important performers on this team going back to last year. Okay, so Willie Adamas, no longer looking over his shoulder with Wander Franco on the way up in Tampa Bay. Willie, shortstop is yours. You look at second base, Colton Wong. Knowing free agency was coming for him with the Cardinals, knowing they were going to probably let him go and have Tommy Edmond come in and fill in, Colton Wong it has been a huge portion of the team. Rowdy Telez, we've already talked about Vlad Jr. Luis Urias, knowing he's not going to be the shortstop of the future with Fernando Tatis Jr. on the way, and with C.J. Abrams in the fold, he knew he wasn't going to be the second baseman of the future either. So where is he going to play? Third base, left field? Now he comes over to the Brewers, and he's seen as an everyday guy. Are you sensing a theme here? Yeah. Look at the guys that are performing best and have been huge points of this offense. They all have one thing in common. Or at least these guys anyway do. They're comfortable. They're given an opportunity, and they are running with it. 
Telez. You're looking at Adamas. You're looking at Caratini to be a legit backup. Even Narvaez, while he was the main catcher in Seattle, he was never looked at as a defensive catcher like he is now that, oh, by the way, can hit as well. He's got a homer and a 226 average as a catcher. A 660 OPS isn't great, but Omar is getting the chance to be the everyday catcher. My point, none of these guys are looking over their shoulder. They're here to play. They're here to win. They are in the window. Kudos again to David Stearns, Matt Arnold, and the entire Brewers front office for recognizing guys that were undervalued by their own teams, given a fair shot here with the Brewers, and they are paying it off. It's great stuff. It's absolutely great to see. Let's look at some other fun stuff here. Runners in scoring position this season. The Brewers, they're now hitting 294 with runners in scoring position. That's in the top half of baseball. Willie's hitting 364 with runners in scoring position. Yelly's hitting 429 with runners in scoring position. They're doing their job. And with the hard hits, too, they are tied fourth in baseball in barrel rate. That's the optimal launch angle. If you watched In the Hopper from Tuesday on our YouTube page, you would know this. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out In the Hopper. It's on our YouTube page. Subscribe while you're there. Barrel rate. A barrel is considered anything from 26 to 31 degrees of launch angle and at least 98 miles an hour off the bat. That is your best conditions, uh, quality of contact, I should say, to hit a home run. And the Brewers are tied fourth in all of baseball in their quality of contact, specifically with barrel rate, which is why when it was frustrating that they weren't getting the balls down like we thought they would with their expected batting average and their expected slugging, this is what it was, Not maybe not to this extent, but the fact that they're hitting the ball hard still and seeing results out of it, this is what we were talking about. Keep hitting the ball hard and good things happen. Now, I mentioned getting a little more aggressive a little bit ago. I asked them to do this about two weeks ago. And I went back and crunched the numbers. So since the Pittsburgh series started on Tuesday of last week, okay, so three games in Pittsburgh and the six games here at home, the Brewers have hit 18 home runs in the first three pitches of the at-bat. Okay? Let that number digest. So in their last nine games, of the 18 18 homers they have hit in that stretch in the first three pitches of the at-bat. Okay? In the first, what would that be? So Brewers have played a total of 26 games, right? 18 and 8. Double-checking here real quick. Yep, 18 and 8. So 26 games. So... In the other 15 games, or excuse me, other 17 games, math, I swear I work with numbers. Again, so last nine games, they have 18 homers in the first three pitches. In the first 17 games, they've hit 12 homers in the first three pitches. Crazy. And the batting average indicates this as well. I asked them to be more aggressive, and they have been. In the first 19 games, they were hitting 197 In the first three pitches of the at bat. Since then, they're hitting 276. Even Craig Council said this a couple weeks ago, saying, I think we're not swinging at the pitches we're supposed to, and we are continuing to take the right ones. So we have to take better swings at the pitches we're supposed to hit. And now we are seeing the results. Just some deeper numbers there. Again, 197 until the Pittsburgh series, so all the way up to that San Francisco game. They were hitting 197 on the first three pitches of the at-bat. Since the Pittsburgh series began, the last nine games, they're hitting 276 on the first three pitches of the at-bat. They're getting more aggressive. They're controlling controlling the strike zone. And that's just saying on the pitches they put in play in the first three pitches. That doesn't count foul balls. It doesn't count takes or anything like that. Just a reminder, they're actually doing damage in the first three pitches of the at-bat. Huge. They're making it work. And they just scored 34 runs against the Reds in a three-game series. Let's talk about those dreaded Braves, the defending World Series champions. Before we do that, remind you about our friends at BetOnline.net, the number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. Uh, By the way, Hunter Green still hit an over in a K prop yesterday, despite only going two and two-thirds. He only allowed one in-play out. Everything else was either a double, a homer, or a strikeout. Really a three true outcomes type day. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including basketball playoffs, Bucks play tomorrow, Major League Baseball, NHL playoffs, Kentucky Derby tomorrow. All of that can be found at betonline.net. 
your continued source for everything sports wagering info. You can go to their website on your on your mobile phone as well. Learn about the trends and get in on the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Okay, Braves. They were off yesterday. They are coming in in a dogfight in the NL East that it is right now. Obviously, the the Mets are one of the best teams in baseball, but don't sleep on the Braves. They're coming in 12 and 15. They just got Ronald Acuna Jr. back. They've got Matt Olson. The pitching, Kyle Wright's been amazing. Charlie Morton has been solid. They might see him on Sunday. Here's what the pitching rotation looks like. Technically, TBA, you'll probably know by the time that this is posted. I'm recording at about 8 o'clock last night. But at the time of recording, it's TBA. Some local reporters are saying that it will be Huascar and Noah who will be up from AAA Gwinnett. He's only made two starts this year in the big league club, and he's been terrible, 0-2, a 13.5 ERA. He'll be going up against the zoom ball that is Eric Lauer. He is 2-0 with a 1.93 ERA. Saturday, we know the starters for this one. Max Fried, great, great pitcher, 3-2, 3.00 ERA against the reigning Cy Young winner. Corbin Burns, 1-1, a 1.93 ERA as well. Then Sunday, technically TBA for the Braves, but we know it will either be Charlie Morton or Kyle Wright. It just depends on who Snit wants to have be uh, get an extra day of rest following that. And then Aaron Ashby will get the spot start to give Woodruff an extra day of rest into Monday to face the Reds in Cincinnati. So Aaron Ashby will get the start against the Braves on Sunday. We know how the playoffs ended last year. The Brewers' offense went ice cold. The Braves pitched very, very well. Jock Peterson happened. Last time the Bre- the, Bre- the Brewers were in Atlanta, it was Game 4. Obviously a heartbreaker with Josh Hader and Freddie Freeman. Uh, Josh Hader, by the way, is healthy. He would have been active in yesterday's game if they needed him. We saw him warming up. The back is fine. It's just mild spasms for a day. They let him rest for a few days, and he hasn't pitched now in nine games, but he'll be fine. He'll probably be hot tonight. Look, I know we're really excited about the offense right now, but don't grade this offense based on one homestand. A great offense is able to recognize this as a flash in the pan and find ways to make aspects of it sustainable. They're not going to hit 20 homers every six games. They're just not going to. They're going to face better pitching with the Braves this weekend. Now, as we've said the last two years, four is the magic number. You get four runs... The Brewers are nearly unbeatable, especially with their pitching staff. Do you need to just say four is the minimum? No. Can you get a little greedy? Yeah. Six would be nice. But the point is, don't expect double-digit runs, especially against a postseason contender like the Braves and against some great pitching. You will see Noah, we'll see Freed, and we'll see Morton or Wright. Noah, not the best, but you get my point. Let's not overreact if they get shut out tomorrow or tonight. Uh, it's baseball. If you go game by game in this in this sport, you will lose your mind. You will lose your hair like me. Okay, don't go game by game. It's not. I look in, in basketball. Obviously, eighty two games, right? We sit here and think, oh my gosh, that's a big loss. There's not much time. But like, well, at the end, it's still eighty two games, still plenty of time. But maybe tiebreakers matter more and things like that. Look, football obviously seventeen games. Every game matters. Baseball, you can lose a game like we saw against the Cubs on Sunday, and still be feeling great. They went 5-1 and one on this homestand. There's no reason to panic if they do lose a game against the Braves. But the Brewers are putting everybody on notice that the offense is for real. Even Christian Yelich made a joke about it yesterday postgame, saying, uh, oh, wow, 20 homers, not bad for a team that can't hit. He's, he, he's listening. He knows. Uh, look, the bell is awesome, by the way, if you didn't see that. They have a new bell inspired by Quinton Berry. Uh, First base coach of the Brewers down at the end of the dugout. Now you ring the bell when you make a good baseball play, whether that's defensively base running or hitting a bunch of homers like the Brewers did. A lot of bell ringing. They get a new, need to get a new clapper on it, according to Willie. that keeps breaking off. Well, maybe he's just ringing it too hard, but it's been a fun week. So let's talk about overall here. So May's a tough month. A lot of time on the road for the Brew Crew. And there will be a home next week. So this is a three-city, 10-day road trip, nine games for the Brew Crew. They're 18-8. and eight. The Mets are currently playing right now, so they're the only other team in the National League that has 18 uh, 
as well. And in fact, the Mets are getting smoked by the Phillies 7-1 to at the time of recording. Uh, but Brewers' schedule here, just looking ahead, it gets really tough here in May. So you got the Braves, obviously tonight. Cincinnati lightens up. We talked about Miami being a great pitcher's ballpark. Then the Braves come here to Milwaukee, a Monday through Wednesday series in two weeks. Then they go to Washington, or host Washington, not a, not a great team. But then, another tough road trip. They go to San Diego, they go to St. Louis for four, and then they got four with the Cubs because of the rain out from opening weekend. So they're going to play 11 games in 10 days on that next following road trip here at the end of the month. Then they welcome in the Padres and the Phillies right after that, and then they go on a tough East Coast road trip again. Nationals, not great, but they go to New York, and then they go to Cincinnati before returning home. So they have three straight, Three city road trips coming up. This is going to be a big portion of the season here for the Brewers. From now until early July, you know, July 19th is when, or excuse me, June, I should say. June 19th is when this stretch ends. So from game 26 tonight to game 68 on June 19th, let's sit back and assess on how they made it through this. Majority of the games will be on the road. So it'll be a total of 29 games on the road of these next 42, okay? It's going to be a tough slut. If you go 500 on the road and win two out of three at home, everybody would be happy. So if they can do that, let's sit back and relax and check in on June 19th on how they did. That's it for this episode. Fun one to recap. Go ring the bell. Have a great, great weekend, everybody. Stay tuned for all of your content on Locked On Brewers. Again, my name is Dominic Catronio. Thanks so much for listening. Be back on Monday with a Mailbag Monday and recapping the weekend down in Atlanta. Thanks again for listening. Until next time, keep on swinging. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.